Hello and welcome to Let's Boot Angular videos. Today we want to look at Angular continuous integration and delivery as well as deployment with GitLab CI. As usual, along to this video, you will find a Medium article explaining each and every step with the sample code to copy paste. So let's look at what we want to do. We want to set up a sample application with end-to-end -end testing and unit testing. For that, I will use my famous plus one clicker I used in the other articles. Then we will configure GitLab CI to unit test, end-to-end -end test and deploy this to search. And then we configure everything once for stage and for production. So that when, when a developer commits and pushes a change to the master branch, it gets automatically tested and deployed to the stage environment. Other users or developers can look at the change there. And if a developer sets a new tag, like a version, and push the tag, the Git tag, it will be automatically pushed to production. There is a little disclaimer here. This is a very simplified setup with one task doing everything. So there is one task for the stage and there is one task for production. GitLab CI is amazing and allows you to split this up in a lot of different ways. You can separate build from different tests and you can also separate deployment, deploying pre-built versions of your application. I suggest to you to start with a simple one-step script if you have a simple project, get used to it, get into GitLab CI with its amazing documentation and then separate the parts as you need when you feel comfortable. So let's start with our clicker application, which is based on my previous tutorials about test-driven development with Angular CLI, GitLab CI and ng test unit testing and the post as well as video about end-to-end -end testing. What we will do to start is we will create a new fresh Angular app. We will then copy paste the previously built code and we will then run ng-test, end-to-end test as well as serve to see if it works on our machine and then we will deploy it from our machine directly to search as a hosting service, which is by the way, amazing for static, static page hosting to see that everything works on our machine. A lot of people ask us why we don't do GitHub boilerplate projects. Certain tutorial, I agree, it's very helpful to have a GitHub project that you can just clone and use. But most often in those GitHub projects, you have a lot of hidden configurations. You usually have old versions and you do not really know how the developer got to this point. Because the developer may think this is obvious because everybody's using Grunt or every, everybody's using Bower or whatever he thinks. But in two or three months, it will be outdated. And in, in, in six months, people maybe use different tools. So it's hard sometimes to know what's in a GitHub project. So I prefer, if it's small enough, to always start from a clean, engine new Angular CLI project so you as a viewer know what you get. So let's just start by creating a new app we call Let's Learn. And if you want to know more about this app, just watch the other videos and you will see what's in there. Okay, so Angular CLI just created a new plain project called Let's Learn. So let's open this project. For that, I switch to it in my terminal and I will open it with Visual Studio Code. So let's start with the template. Everything you'll, I'll do, you'll find in this gist. And because the tutorial is not about the app, I won't explain everything in detail. So we have two buttons, plus one and reset that increase points. Then we go and get the class. And if you look at it, it basically has a points variable, it has a function plus one and the function reset. And now we want to continue with writing the spec file, which is the unit test. So we go into app component spec, we add our unit test matching this application. So I check the app is created, if there is the title, um, if it rendered the title and if it increases points when I click on it. So this is the unit test only for this component. Okay, and then we have the end-to-end -end test and the end-to-end -end test consists of two parts. The first part is the so-called page object. The page object helps you 
as a developer to access all the elements on your page. So for example, we, we need the title, we need the point variable, we need the plus one button and the reset button. And Protractor, the end-to-end -end framework, will actually open a Chrome browser in dev mode, start your Angular application and actually click on the generated buttons. So now I want to copy paste the test and as said, I just want to have some tests so that we have a, a working example with all the parts needed. So I go to app end to end spec, which is the test file. And now you see I have a test which checks for the title and I have a test where I click on the buttons and I want to see if the value of the points change. And now we can go to the terminal and run ng-surf with O, then it opens the browser. And now we do manual testing of our basic functionality. So that works. Now I want to do unit testing. So I run ng-test. And because I just want to know if it works once, I say watch false. So now it runs the test once. Everything is successful. So now let's do ng end to end test you see it starts the chrome driver it does our tests and everything worked so we know that it works what's new is that we want to actually deploy the application and to deploy it i want to use the service which is amazing to publish static websites if you run this command the first time you will have to install it put save to that and now if you if you never used it you can run node modules search login which then will log you in. If you ran node modules dot bin search login, it will ask you to create a new login with email address and password, and it will save this with a token in a file in your home directory. So you can always log in to deploy it. So what we do want to do now is we want to build our application. We run ng build ng build prod AO. So now we have a statically built version on our local machine, and now we want to deploy this. And to deploy it, we run node module spin search and we have the option p to tell it which folder we want to deploy which is the dist folder and then we tell it which domain we want because otherwise it takes a random domain let's call this domain plus one stage you will have to use another name because this is a name i'm already using for my account okay so now we can actually open this and we will see that our application was just deployed so we have now done all the steps that GitLab will have to do. What do we want to do to, to deploy that is we want to go to our GitLab. We want to create a new project. Let's call it plus one. And now we have a new clean project. So we can now add the remote to our project here. Angular CLI already created a git so we do not have to run git in it then we can say because we did some changes git status we see there are a lot of changes and now i say git add a and we say git commit um, basic app this is just for demonstration you should split up your commits and then i can basically say git push u this is something you have to do the first time U means upstream, so this is kind of the default, so origin master. So it pushes the local master branch to the origin remote. So we can have multiple remotes. Okay, so now if you look here, we'll see that the project will have the code that we just developed. So now we want to tell GitLab how to deploy our application and where to deploy it to. But GitLab doesn't have our local credentials for search. So it cannot log into it. So we have to give it kind of login variables or tokens to, to do so. In my written tutorial, you see screenshots how to do it. And I will just quickly show you a part of it. So if you run cat home directory dot net RC, you will find a login and a token that you will have to add in GitLab CI. I will quickly do that. So to add this, I go to settings, I go to pipelines, and if I scroll down, if I scroll down, I see secret variables. I see this variable. So I can say I want to have a new variable, 
which is called search login. Okay, so I have the search login and the search token as variables in my GitLab so that GitLab can log in to search with my account. Nearly every cloud system has something similar to, to do this. Now we, do our, we create our first recipe or let's call it GitLab CI configuration, how to deploy Git, uh, our project to, to our search account and how to test it. So what we want to do now is we want to take this GitLab CI and create the file in our new project and just check some parts of it. So first of all, it takes a Docker image, which is pre-built to test and compile Angular apps. Then we tell it to cache the node modules. So whenever it does a new build, it takes the cache node modules. So it's a bit faster. And then we configure the stage deployment task, which runs whenever something is pushed to master. We give it a name for the environment and we tell it um, what stage this job is in. We now use the, directly the GitLab CI deploy stage because we do it in one big task. And then we have the script, which is basically kind of a shell script with the difference that each of the commands is only run if the previous command is right. So if we go here, we remove the package log JSON, so it newly installs the current versions. Then we run the Angular, t the Angular tests. Then we run the end-to-end -end test for Angular. And then we build the application. And then we have the search command, which deploys everything to our domain, to the plus one stage domain. And now the funny thing about this is as soon as I deploy this GitLab CI EML, GitLab CI will see, oh, there is a new change. Oh, there is a GitLab CI configuration. What should I do? Oh, I should do something if somebody does something with master. Okay, I will do this with this Docker image. So let's try that out. For that, I basically just push my change and say basic stage CD and see commit it and push it. And now if I go to GitLab in pipelines, I will see my pipeline running. So already there is a process running. And if you go on this running process, you see a bit of more information like the commit and who did it. And we also have this button down here where I can go to deploy stage. And if you click on that, because it's really important, you will actually see the command line running on this Docker instance. So if you don't know Docker, Docker is kind of a container for whatever you want to do with applications and your own configuration. So it feels a bit like a virtual machine, but it's not a virtual machine. But you still can do all the things you want to do with configuration, installing applications um, in this container. And Docker is often used for build, but you can also use it for production hosting. So wow, this actually worked. It took a while, but amazing. It's pushed, it's published. If I go to the site, I have my new stage version on there. Okay, so let's enjoy this moment because that's DevOps and you did the little first steps you need to be amazing. But so now we want to actually differentiate between publishing or committing a version for the stage. So every new change we want to commit, if this is our process we want to see on stage and the production where we only want to have the actually new versions published. For that, I can simply add a second block to my Git CI. I will call this production. I will also put it into the deploy stage. And now it's not only master, but it's only tags. So only tags, new tags for my Git repository. Everything else stays the same so far, except the domain. So I won't put it on plus one stage. I will directly put it on my amazing new startup app domain plus one search.sh. And now again, if I, if I do this change, if I commit it and push it, it will automatically run 
the stage deployment. So let's just commit this change, added prod deployment on tag push. And now I don't want to just push it, I want to add a new tag. So if I go to the terminal with git, I can say git tag and I let's say we call this version 1.0.42. So let's create a so-called annotated tag because it's doing the same thing as it would do with a branch. And this is a bit more flexible and stable if you want to do something with this tag in the future. And then we have the option M for the message. So we call this amazing deployment test. And now we have a tag. So now we have to push this tag. So we can say git status and we see there is a commit for the master. So let's push that one first. And then we have to separately push our tag. So let's call git push origin, which is our remote. And then we call it v1.0.42. So it feels like pushing a new branch. And now it will tell the remote git, GitLab, that there is a new tag. And now you will see there are two jobs running. There is one job which is for deploying it on stage, including testing. And there is one job to deploy the new tag to production. So now if I go to production plus one dot search dot sh, I will see my version deployed. And if I change something or if I break a test, it will tell me that the test is broke. And if everything works, it will deploy it on stage. And if I add a new tag and everything works, it will deploy it on production. What's next? First of all, we should party and try this out. And I really recommend you to start with continuous delivery and integration as early in your project as possible. Even if you choose a simple pass as I sh just showed you, but start early and try to keep it running and try to add complexity as you go, as you need it. It's much harder to integrate it after one year if you have a big code base and a lot of dependencies and a lot of requirements. And the next thing is we want to have different environments for our Angular configuration. We want to use Git hooks for automatically adding the tags when we add a new version to package JSON. And we want to separate the CI and CD steps so the testing, build and deployment or separated pipeline jobs for GitLab CI. And to see those, follow us on YouTube, follow Flavi, Rob and me on Twitter or Facebook and you will get all the new nice videos. So thank you and goodbye.